Hello and welcome. It's Doug Diamond. You made it to another Diamond Report Live. Hope you guys have had a great weekend. It's been a busy one around here. It is currently 10.06 p.m. Central Time. That is on December the 10th, if you can believe that. Hard to imagine. But uh, yeah, this year's almost over. So yeah, let's uh, take a look at the news. I've been a little pressed for time today, so I have not done the prep that I normally am able to do, but um, I've got a few things pulled up, and I guess we can probably spend a little time going through what I have, and then we'll do some other things sort of on the fly, which we've been known to do before, and I sort of don't mind that, that whole idea of, uh, you know, breaking news and, and looking at things live with you guys, if you don't mind. So, but yeah, we've got several things to take a look at, some stuff that I already found. So, here we go. We have HowTurnerRadioShow.com pulled up. And I've had a lot of questions about the uh, tornadoes in this area, and it we, we missed it. Totally missed us. It was kind of north of us. So praise the Lord on that. So thank you guys who have asked about that. But yeah, we were fine. We uh, didn't even lose power. So that's pretty cool. And um, the first article I've got pulled up here is on Hal's website. It's U.S. Vetoes Security Council Resolution Calling for an Immediate Ceasefire in Gaza. The U.S. has vetoed a resolution at the UN Security Council, which would have called for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Says the individual you see casting the U.S.'s vote is Deputy U.S. Ambassador of, to the UN, Robert Wood. There he is here, including the video clip. Robert Wood was nominated by fake President Biden on December 15, 2021, to serve as the alternative, the alternate representative to the U.S. of America for special political affairs in the U.N. and alternate representative of the United States for special political affairs in the sessions of the General Assembly of the U.N. He was confirmed by the United States Senate on September 21, 2022, and took the oath of office, supposedly, on Thursday, October 6, 2022. A lot of these people didn't actually take their oaths. We are finding this out. Um, I guess so they ostensibly wouldn't be held accountable. So I would be surprised if this dude really took an oath. But that's what Hal's saying here in this article. So anyway, it goes on to talk about uh, what happened here. It says um, more details about him and what he's uh, done in the past, I guess. And um, But just note that the U.S. wants no end, no ceasefire in Gaza. Not a surprise there, right? And there was some other statements here above this um, in, in the main part of the uh, homepage talking about the weather, lots of weather-related stuff with tornadoes in December, which I guess is totally normal now. And some of the articles I've got pulled up from needtoknow.news is the Speaker of the House blurring January 6 videos to protect infiltrators. Speaker of the House Johnson has introduced has announced that while he plans to make good on his promise to release all of the January 6th Capitol footage, he has stipulated that the faces of many protesters will be blurred out. Mm-hmm. Ostensibly to protect them from being identified and targeted. Too late. Former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund said that multiple federal agent, agents were in the crowd during the invasion of the U.S. Capitol building on January 6, 2021. The invasion. No, it was a protest that went awry and mostly because there were hundreds of feds in the crowd, not just a few. Okay, and it says, but he wasn't informed of their presence. Many critics, including congressmen and other police officers, have accused federal agents and police of infiltrating the pro-Trump crowd on January 6th. Jimmy Dore speculated that writer Kevin Lyons flashed a police badge at the Capitol. And here's some videos embedded. There's the police badge being flashed. Yeah, and um, you can see them high-fiving each other and saying how great you guys are to be undercover, framing these uh, protesters. So, and they're still jailing people for January 6th, if you can believe that. It's hard to imagine, but they are. So, yeah, Johnson is, uh, I don't know. I guess the verdict's still out, although it depends on who you ask. I personally don't think that uh, he's going to be doing very many good things for us. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, the next article I've got pulled up here, UNLV shooter was college professor rejected for a position at the school. Anthony Polito, a 67-year-old professor who unsuccessfully applied for a job at University of Las Vegas, 
University of Nevada, Las Vegas, was identified as the gunman who shot and killed three members of the faculty and staff on December 6th. So this was just a few days ago. A fourth person was injured and is in critical condition. Polito was killed by police during a shootout at the scene. The motive for the attack is unknown, but he is, it has been suggested that Polito may have been rejected for a position at the school. He held degrees in mathematics and a doctorate in philosophy. He had a personal website where he claims to have decoded the letters from the Zodiac Killer. He also listed powerful organizations bent on world domination and included George Soros in his list of great minds of the 20th century. Soros. And probably Kissinger was one of his heroes too, I'm guessing. So, anyway, there you go. So, yeah, that was uh, need to know dot news. So, this last one I've got pulled up from there. U.S. signs new climate pact to shut down all coal plants. Meanwhile, China is building them faster than you can possibly imagine. It's okay if they do it, just not us. John Kerry is an unelected bureaucrat as the special presidential envoy on climate matters, which is a meaningless position, but he's got all kinds of power. Announced the United States has proudly, quote-unquote, committed to not, not build any new coal power plants and to get rid of existing ones entirely. So, again, it's a bridge to nowhere. Uh, they have nothing to replace it. On December 2nd, he announced that the United States had officially joined the coalition of 56 other countries who all plan to ditch coal in the name of climate change. And I bet all 56 are Western countries with high populations of white people. Just a guess. While no specific date was given for when the Biden administration's plans to nix America's existing coal plants and other regulatory actions by the administration indicate 2035 as the year when coal ends. So, anyway, there you go. We know that that is exactly what they want to do. They want to end it all so that we can not move, not move about freely. As you guys know. Okay, and then the next articles I have pulled up came from Revolver.News. Washington Engager, damning clips of Taylor Swift, viciously mocking and degrading Christians and having her um, likeness projected on Jesus Christ down in Brazil. Remember that article from a few weeks ago? It's no secret that Taylor Swift aligns herself with left-leaning politics. Her strong support for the LGBTQ community and vocal endorsement of Democrat candidates make it evident that she doesn't adhere to conservative or Christian principles. However, her disdain for conservatives seems to extend beyond mere political differences. A recently surfaced video captures Swift engaging in a mocking tone towards Bible-believing Christians. Watch the video. Here's a quick reminder of what Taylor Swift thinks about Christians. I don't want the music to uh, stop my live stream. So here it is. So this is all scenes from, I don't know, maybe one of her videos or something. And it says she's the person of the year according to time. So big shocker there, huh? From the Western Journal, uh, on Wednesday, conservative commentator John Root posted a 12-second clip from the music video of Swift's song, You Need to Calm Down, which depicted two men kissing in what appeared to be a marriage ceremony, followed seconds later by a close-up of five stereotypical hillbillies, one wore a cowboy hat, and another wore a tank top with American flag, angrily looking on in protest. Anyway, and then it says Swift used those hillbillies, of course, as stand-ins for anyone who holds the Christian view of marriage. The song's lyrics made that clear. Are you, why are you mad when you could be glad? Sunshine on the street at the parade, but you would rather be in the dark ages. Here's a quick reminder of what she thinks about Christians. Root posted, so that was what we just... Uh, examined there for a second so anyway i think that's uh, definitely not news to anyone out there listening but i did, did want to point it out to you guys because uh, i came across that article earlier so speaking of aj and thus Infowars, our friend owen is now out of prison he's a free man as of i don't know maybe a couple of days ago i think he was in for a total of 47 or 48 days for doing absolutely nothing he was in solitary confinement for most of that time, again, for doing nothing. 
He was imprisoned for his free speech in what could maybe amount to a misdemeanor, but again, for doing nothing? So this is his um, tweet on Owen Schroyer, 1776. I am finally out of prison, happy to be free, grateful to be loved, and excited for what's next. My spirit is bright, my heart is full, my mind is sharpened, my soul is rejuvenated. My faith in God solidified. My faith in the American people reaffirmed, according to Owen. So, and he mentioned in an interview that I saw that he read 15 books while he was in there, and one of them he read was the Bible cover to cover. So, and, and then he talked about um, Paul and Silas and some of the other um, scriptures that really jumped out at him while he was in, in prison like that. So, anyway, I just wanted you guys to know that he is out of prison. He's going to have a heck of a story to tell. And there'll be a lot of people listening. Look for him to be on with Tucker very soon. I do know that he will be on that show. Um, so that will reach a lot of people. And he's doing a lot of good work. So, again, wrongfully wrongfully imprisoned. And um, he was even talking about how the warden at the prison could not believe that he was there. That he shouldn't be there. So, anyway, that's good news. And I found this article. The Western Journal. Music superstar stuns fans by retiring and devoting life to Jesus. We saw an article last week, if you guys remember, about a YouTuber who get, who gave up his, uh, who deleted all the videos on his channel because he was no longer happy with the work that he'd done, uh, essentially poking fun at people and, and making fun of things and uh, getting people fired, apparently. So he had become a Christian and deleted all his videos, and he, he'd been reaching millions of people. I don't know if you guys remember that article from last uh, last week's show. In Mere Christianity, legendary Christian author C.S. Lewis had a message for those he called intellectual slackers. If you're thinking of becoming a Christian, I warn you, you're embarking on something that is going to take the whole of you, brains and all, C.S. Lewis, Lewis wrote. On Sunday night in Puerto Rico, music superstar Daddy Yankee showed what happens when Christianity, Christianity takes the whole of you. According to NBC, the 46-year-old Spanish-speaking regga reggaeton performer, reggaeton blends musical genres such as reggae, dance, and rap, and closed his final show by announcing live on stage that he henceforth, he henceforth that he will give his life to Jesus Christ. This was his quote. My people, this day for me is the most important day of my life, and I want to share it with you. Because living a life of success is not the same as living a life with purpose. That's beautiful. The singer said in Spanish. In the Spanish-speaking music world, this qualifies as a bombshell. For context, Daddy Yankee has 48.9 million followers on Instagram. The music superstar used that platform to post a clip of his live heartfelt message to his fans. And that post is already received 1.7 million likes as of Tuesday morning. And here he is, and then there's the clip. But of course, it's in Spanish. Uh, Tonight I recognize that I am not ashamed to tell the whole world that Christ lives in me and that I will live for him, he wrote in Spanish, according to a Google translation. I'm surprised Google allowed the translation. Daddy Yankee's message reminds us yet that, again, that God works through every medium, including music. I have uh, witnessed that myself, being in the music business. It's very true. For instance, according to NBC, the reggaeton megastar stood on stage and quoted a version of Mark 8.36. What good would it, will it be for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Earlier this year, overnight music sensation Oliver Anthony of Richmond, North of Richmond fame, delivered the same message at the end of Anthony's second Viral song and video, I want to go home, the same New Testament passage appeared. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? After quoting Mark 8.36, Daddy Yankee then shared his new purpose in life. So his new purpose, says, that is why I that is why tonight I recognize that I am not ashamed to tell the whole world that Jesus lives in me and that I will live for him. He's now living for the kingdom. So I thought that was a pretty neat story. Yeah, so Daddy Yankee. I don't know if you guys know who he is. I'd heard the name, hadn't really followed him before, but um, pretty interesting. And 
congrats. I think that's a huge step. He's probably going to lose his record deal too, and that's that's next, most likely. From the Discern report, evil on a scale that I don't even know how to describe. So this is uh, an article by by Michael Schneider. I've mentioned him multiple times on this show before. Says this is not an easy article to write. In fact, it would probably be easier if I did not write about this at all. But if we do not speak out, that is a victory for evil. So I'm going to share some truly horrible things with you in this article. Everything I'm going to share comes from a mainstream news source. But I have to warn you in advance that this material is not for the faint of heart. Uh, so if you do not want to read about the sexual violence and that Hamas has been committing, you should stop reading now. So this is on um, the CERN report. And this is talking about the atrocities according to um, what he's got in the report here in this article. The atrocities that happened on October 7th by Hamas, which I don't doubt that, but we do know that Israel had a stand down. And they basically let them come right in and do whatever they wanted to do for a few hours. So who's at fault? Um, so anyway, this is uh, an article that can be found on... Um, discernreport.com is the website and we'll link to this one and all the others that I talk about tonight in my Substack post that I'll do tomorrow hopefully. All right, technocracy.news. Got a few little blurbs here that we can read through. Global censorship strategy, US and UK military contractors. Conspiracy. I started the non-profit Citizens for Free Speech. Now this is uh, Patrick Wood talking. Um, in 2018, based on his observations of collusion between Facebook and Twitter. Now, we see the hand of the military at every turn, reinforcing his 2015 declaration of war on technocracy. When and if free speech dies, if we don't stop the attacks in the first place, it will pave the way for genocide in America. Sadly, this is an immutable lesson from history. Yes, one that people don't seem to want to pay attention to. China harvests DNA globally from pregnant women and fetuses. Communists would have no clue what to do with DNA, but technocrats do. Technocrats in China are harvesting DNA from every known people group in every locality and race in the world. Blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, Europeans, Africans, Aussies, down to Aborigines in the outback. Why? To develop selective bioweapons to target certain groups. So they are very diverse and equitable and inclusive. So they have that down. Uh, nobody is uh, immune from the CHICOM's bioweapons program. And I would take it a step further. No one also is immune to the United States Empire's bioweapons program. Same thing. So anyway, that is on technocracy.news. About genetic engineering and then this one as well smart dust we mentioned this last week I don't know why so many people are talking about it at the moment but this particular article says what is it and how is it used this article is a few years old but it's a good primer about smart dust the technology in the industry forming around it is huge and totally transformative of course should not be surprising that DARPA started this in the first place for military applications on the battlefield and then the technocrat scientists took it from there Yes, and that will be part of the uh, computing system, the edge computing system you may have heard about that will be run with the 6G system, the 7G system. Everything will have a node. Everything will be a node on the network. Everything. Every blade of grass. Everything. That's the idea. So talking about smart dust. Yeah, and look up edge computing if you've never heard of it. Uh, here's the Grinch. The Binomics is the Grinch that stole Christmas bonuses. This is on uh, the LibertyBeacon.com. I didn't really have time to go through all of these articles, so I thought I would just pull it up and look and see if anything jumped out at me. And the U.S. joins over 60 other nations to tackle climate change. Yes, they do that by shutting off the infrastructure and saying how great they are. We already covered that earlier. So yeah, have a look at this website if you want. Tons of good info. Get on their newsletter list. Uh, I've been on there for a long time. I've, I've perused their website for many years at this point. But yeah, the Liberty Beacon. It's a good source, I think. And uh, libertybeacon.com is where it is. 
Now, D Daily Crow is another kind of really good jumping off point. I don't know if you guys have heard me mention it before. It's a really good website. Uh, it's run by a guy named Matt Peterson, unless it's changed hands. That was the person who used to run the website. And um, he does a really good job of finding alternative news headlines. And in fact, this is where I get a lot of my headlines on articles that I talk about. I hadn't really had time to really peruse this site like I normally do uh, for today's broadcast. However, I thought we would just go through some of these things live. Google is quietly building an omnipresent AI that will be linked to all your devices and apps and knows everything about your life. When we step back and understand your life in its entirety, the slide continued, your overarching story becomes clear. Project Elman equals L, as in God. And man, Project Elman is what they're calling it. Um, so this is actually a, a Daily Mail article, is what this is. And apparently, speaking of John Kerry earlier, John Kerry rips one, and by ripping one, you know exactly what I mean, while talking about emissions and sounding the alarm. So he's sounding his own alarm with his own posterior. Um, I guess he must be wanting to um, be in the AOC uh, group of um, online farters or something. I don't know. But yeah, John Kerry is now ripping them live on camera. So here's the YouTube video if you want to watch it. And it didn't bother pulling it up, but you guys can go find it if you want. Saudi Arabia just and just received their second leopard for their bizarre yet seemingly prophetic breeding program. So if you're interested in breeding leopards, here's the link for you. Fears vast Hamas terror cell network will be activated over Christmas in UK and Europe as Israel issues urgent warning. So I don't know about that. We'll see. Usually these types of warnings are end up end up being nothing. So we'll see what happens. Brazilian city enacts an an, an, or, an ordinance that was secretly written by ChatGPT. This is on App News is where the article is. Brazilian city enacts an, ordin an ordinance that was secretly written by ChatGPT. So, isn't that nice? Arizona sheriff, illegal immigrants being handed $5,000 Visa gift cards, cell phones, and plane tickets. So, if you want to get rich quick, you have to leave the country and then come in illegally. But you'll have to change your skin color if you're white. Because they won't give it to you. Um, so, just a thought. That's on Zero Hedge. We'll read a couple more here. Another enormous line of hundreds upon hundreds of adult men from around the globe crossing illegally into Lukeville, Arizona last night and are now waiting for Border Patrol to take custody of them as they expect to be released into the U.S. Non-stop flow of illegal crossings here. So we've got a Twitter video of that. CNN, it's time for Carbon Passports to limit how often we can travel abroad. So there you go. They are going to limit our ability to move. It will be part of the world ID that they want to make sure they give all of us. So, anyways, not too surprising there. And let's see. FDA approves controversial lab-grown meat becomes a reality. So, I'm just looking at the chat because we've got lots of uh, links being floated here in chat. So, hopefully, uh, my wonderful admin is taking care of that, if possible. More propaganda from the inversion using a cell phone for two hours a day may lower your risk of mental health problems, a study suggests. The world is mentally ill, and you would be hard-pressed to find anyone who isn't using their phone at least two hours a day. I think two hours would be like a day off for most people. So anyway, this is all stuff that can be found over here on Daily Crow. Good, uh, a good spot for uh, media resources, alternative media. Rothschild says WEF, the WEF will soon control what users purchase in a new cashless society. And guess who is front and center in this picture? Of course, based on the picture, it might have been a few years ago. I don't know. The head of the Rothschild banking dynasty has ordered world governments to accelerate the implementation of 
cashless societies and has boasted that WEF controlled artificial intelligence will soon dictate what the public can and can't do with their own money. You see how it's all coming together? WEF now and AI and um, artificial intelligence, you know, controlling all these different things and money and vaccine passports and world IDs and all this stuff. It's all coming together. It's all linked. And guess who is at the, is at the titular head of all of it? This dude right here. Uh, and if you've never heard of him, he is supposed to be a king somewhere. Uh, Lady Lynn Forrester de Rothschild says that the WEF-controlled AI bots are essentially are essential for making the world a more equitable place. Yes, and diverse, and diverse and inclusive. Right? You have to have all three words in there. The Rothschild family established the Council for Inclusive Capitalism, an initiative that came into prominence during the peak of the COVID pandemic. The controversial council embodies many of the globalist ideals that alternative media has warned about. So this is a pretty substantial piece here, so feel free to take a look at this, including uh, some video here that's linked as well. So that's on the People's Voice. U.S. government uses emergency authority to provide tank shells to Israel. They just find every way they can possibly get in order to be involved in what's going on in Israel and Gaza. The Biden administration has used an emergency authority to allow the sale of about 14,000 tank shells to Israel without congressional review. The Pentagon said the State Department on Friday used an Arms Export Control Act emergency declaration. Everything's always an emergency with these people. Because if it wasn't a quote-unquote emergency, they would never be able to pass it. And they know this. It, the emergency declaration for the tank rounds worth $106.5 million for immediate delivery to Israel, the Pentagon said in a statement. The shells are part of a bigger sale that was first reported by Reuters. On Friday, the Biden administration is asking U.S. Congress to approve. The larger package is worth more than $500 million and comprises 45,000 shells for Israel's Merkaba tanks, uh, regularly deployed in its offensive in Gaza, which has killed thousands of civilians. So we want more death. Let's send them more shells, according to the U.S. government and the Pentagon. Shocker, I know. Not the B.com. This always has uh, some really good articles on it. I didn't really have time to uh, look through all these different ones, so I thought we'd just look at a few of the headlines. Scientists observe metal healing itself. I think I've seen this before in a movie. Uh, we've covered this, like, I think, several months back because this is Robert Patrick, and I told my Robert Patrick story um, for you guys. I don't know if you remember, but um, yeah, metal healing itself. Viral TikToker thinks. We should all just stop working so hard and at our jobs and just relax. And says, Massachusetts man wears a knife necklace, trips, and stabs himself, and then dies. He has a knife necklace. SNL tried to mock Republican Elise Stefanik for exposing Ivy League's softness towards anti-Semitism, and it did not go well for them. Parents want Google to change the top results for Is Santa Real during the Christmas season. We know Santa's real because you just reverse a couple letters and you get Satan. Um, watch these genius construction workers move a 220-ton historic house with 700 bars of soap. I'm sure you want to see that. But that's all linked to here on notthebee.com. It's a good site if you want to break from the... Uh, Monotony, the craziness in your life, go to notthebee.com. I think it's a good site. They have some interesting and sometimes really funny stuff. Vaccineimpact.com. Are the space wars about to begin? Is the second is the second bowl judgment about to be poured out? I would say we have a little time on that based on um, what I have been looking at, things I have studied. Um, however, this is actually talking about NASA's fake moon landing hoax from 1969. So, on that, let's go ahead and watch this video. I think it will fit nicely in with this particular article. We'll, we'll look at this article in, um, in brief when we come back. 
So yeah, let's take a look at this video. You may have already seen it. Uh, but this is a um, another Greg Reese report. And it's called, Putin told moon landing photos are fake. And I have more information on this when we come back. So here it is. Okay. Yeah, so interesting video. Very well done. But a couple things about that video. Um, number one, I really enjoy Greg's reporting. I think he's uh, a very good uh, adept video maker as well. Um, but the main thing is here. You guys may have heard the name Bart Sabrell on this show. He's been a guest on this show before. I don't even do interviews. And Bart Sabrell, a good friend of mine, was uh, a guest on the Diamond Report maybe last year sometime. I think it was 2022, maybe September. Um, and much of what Greg was reporting in that video is Bart Sabrell's information. It came right from his movies. And it's not like, I mean, yes, the uh, the video clip he showed for the film that Bart made called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon um, was pulled from a different YouTube channel, not Bart's. So I'll give him that. However, with just a little bit of work, he could have found out who created the movie, where all this information came from, and um, read or at least seen Bart's book called Moon Man. And for you guys that don't know, this is um, Moon Man right here. Bart Sabrell. Here's the book. And here's some different videos about the moon landing fraud. And I wish Greg would have done his homework from the standpoint of giving credit to Bart because he gave no credit to Bart at all. So that's very disappointing to me um, because Bart Sabrell is a good friend and a client of mine. Um, I maintain his website for him. If you scroll all the way down here to the bottom, you'll see at the very bottom here, well, it's behind me in this uh, photo here, but it says website managed by Diamond Digital Media. That is me. So I know Bart really well, and I wish Greg would have given him credit uh, for much of that information because a lot of that, including the shadows and how uh, electric light-based shadows are uh, from different angles, you know, creating different angles and stuff, whereas natural shadows from the sun are always running in parallel with each other and so forth. All that information comes right from Bart Sabrell and from his book and from his talks that he's done, multiple interviews across all different kinds of shows, all different kinds of platforms over the years, including Lost Arts Radio. That, that's where I first met him. He's, he was on Lost Arts Radio a couple different times as well. So anyways, it, it's, it's very disappointing that Greg did not give Bart credit for that, but he missed the big story here, which I was actually going to report to you guys last week because I knew about it and just forgot to bring it up on the broadcast last week. So we're going to go through it now because I think this is super interesting. And I did post this in Band, and I saw lots of people, maybe Emily and some others, talking about Band in the chat. So if you're not in the Band group for the Diamond Report, you should join the Band group. It's totally free and. Um, Sometimes I'll post things like that that are only going to show up there and I don't even put it on Facebook or, or mention it in, in any videos or anything like that. Um, so the band group is a good place to be for certain types of breaking news and things that I want to post that I know I will get censored for if I post it in other places like Facebook and, and, and other platforms like that. So here is the main article. The main thing that was mentioned in Greg's title for his video, which was, called, which was called Putin Told Moon Landing Photos Are Fake. But he didn't really go into it in a lot of detail. He did mention it. But here's the real story. And this is another Bart Sabrell exclusive. So I'm going to give full credit to my good friend here. And it's right here on his homepage of his website. Breaking news. Google's advanced AI neural network says that the Chinese moon pictures are real and the the American moon pictures are fake. I think that's a pretty big deal. Advanced AI. Says Google's highly advanced AI, the American neural network, not Chinese or Russian, just said that the American Apollo moon pictures are fake and that the Chinese moon pictures, which were taken from an unmanned probe, are real. This was announced to Russian President Vladimir Putin at the latest international AI conference, who was not at all surprised by the findings because he knows the American empire are nothing but liars. The AI has never been wrong a single time about such photos. The link to the Russian to English translation, translation of this breaking news story was quickly nullified hours after posting. Google Translate then refused 
to translate a copy of the article from Russian to English, and the original Russian link now even threatens the user with, you are trying to access a URL that is suspected child sexual abuse or exploitation material. Site will give you access to your data. <laughs> wow, who would dare click on such a link? Google's search engine, originally created with taxpayer funding by DARPA and the CIA for psychological propaganda, is really trying hard to kill this historical revelation its own advanced AI just made, declaring that the pictures from the corrupt federal government's moon missions are indeed fake and that the recent Chinese probe pictures of the moon's surface are very real in comparison. Then here's a picture from the International Conference on AI. Now, if you click this, if you click this uh, homepage picture here, you're going to you're going to get the um, PDF that we linked up here on Bart's site. This is his entire article, and he spent a lot of time putting this article together. So, again, giving full props and credits to Mr. Sabrell here. We basically read through the homepage, uh, the page one. I mean, page one of the PDF, and. Um, these pictures are shown in the Reese report, if I remember right. It says, we've been thinking for a long time about what to test it on. In the end, we decided to take photos of the U.S. Apollo missions because there's a lot of discussion about whether it was real or not. We ran Apollo pictures through the deep fake protocol and got very interesting results. So this is what, um, what Greg was referring to there. Without any emotional attachment, deductive reasoning concludes that, that the simple fact is that it is impossible for technology to be more advanced in the past than it is in the future. Today, with 50 years better rocket and computer technology, NASA, which is, that stands for Never a Straight Answer, can only send astronauts one thousandth the distance to the moon than they claimed that they did the first attempt ahead of schedule. With antiquated, untried 1960s equipment, which only had one millionth the computing power of a cell phone. <laughs> uh huh. <clears throat> Courtesy of the federal government. So this is the uh, photo that was analyzed here. The 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 golfer supposedly. So let's uh, let's keep going here. I think this is pretty interesting. I'm going to skip past page three here. It says what parts of the moon picture supplied by the federal government did AIs uh, did Google's AI conclude are fake? About half of the elements in the picture highlighted in red. You can see it here. The AI saw multiple discrepancies between the distribution of light on the mountain and the direction of the astronaut's shadow. In addition, the neural network did not like the blurriness in the foreground and said that it is not a real outdoor setting. A section of the mountain to the left behind the astronaut's back, right back here, is also highlighted in red because the AI, the AI says it is a fake backdrop. The entire astronaut figure is also highlighted in red as the AI concludes that it is actually not an astronaut at all, but rather a miniature of an astronaut, a doll, that was placed on an electrically lit miniature movie set of the, mo of the moon's surface. And you can see one of those um, very detailed movie sets here from the James Bond film Goldeneye, just as an example. So this is... Um, Another one of those types of shots. Is it a real moon picture or a miniature of the lunar lander? Anyway, and then this is this gets into the shadows. Natural sunlight, like the moon, has parallel shadows. In the federal government's pictures of the moon landing, the intersecting shadow of a movie light. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here, don't worry about the arrows so much as note this astronaut, supposedly, this astronaut's shadow right here. Its shadow is going this way, and look at the shadow coming from this big fat rock right here. It's going that way. It's going pointing to the left. That is not possible in natural light, only artificial light, only electrical light. So, again, this is all Bart Sabrell's information from his books and films and stuff like that. I wish Greg would have mentioned that in his video, which now has, at last check, over 300,000 views. Uh, because um, Bart should get credit for what he's talking about here. And I know he could um, definitely use the attention as far as the um, the way the, the uh, Reese report is being shared amongst people. So, 
Anyway, if you guys are out there sharing the um, moon landing research report, feel free to um, do that, but also try and mention Bart because he's doing a really good job. And um, this is his website here, which, um, which has links to basically all the stuff that we talked about, including a funny thing happened on the way to the moon, which is this video right here. You can watch it for free right, right here on the um, sabrell.com website. And this is um, this is sort of like um, the video that came out later after the book came out. This is um, the deathbed confession from the moon fraud eyewitness security chief at the Cannon Air Force Base in 1968, Cyrus Eugene Akers, a deathbed confession. So he's the guy that's talked about in this book. So that's a lot of information. I know we spent a lot of time on this tonight, but I really wanted to set the record straight as best as I could. And, um, yeah, a link for Bart's channel. Um, just look him up on YouTube, Bart Sabrell, S-I-B-R-E-L. It's right above my head, right there. Um, yeah, you can find him on YouTube. He's got a, a pretty expansive uh, YouTube channel. And then, of course, his website, you can just go to Sabrell, just his last name, Sabrell.com. So, yeah, thank you guys for sharing his work. I know he highly appreciates it. And um, he should be credited, really, with... Um, with a lot of this stuff because it's pretty important info, I think. And then, well, we didn't really finish over on vaccine impact, so let's take a look back on um, that website. This is where we where we started at all of that um, that long uh, side sidebar that we just went through with the moon landing fraud. But anyway, this this is one of the articles on vaccine impact. Are the space wars about to begin? Is the second bold judgment about to be poured out? So this is getting into um, biblical prophecy and, and um, information here as well. Um, so yeah, you can take a look at that article if you want. The U.S. stands alone in the world supporting genocide against the Palestinian people. Yep, American Empire loves its genocide. I mean, you, you have to remember that the American Empire is genociding its own people. So it has no problem genociding the Palestinians and everyone else. Uh, the imminent demise of Christianity in America, come out of her, my people, lest you share her plagues. So that's another article. Um, is Lady Liberty Columbia, the great prostitute of the, of the prophecy residing in Washington, D.C., the revived Roman Empire to fall during the last days? Well, we may be witnessing that now. You and I may be part of that right now. So I just had a look over on Rumble, and it looks like we've got uh, quite a few people watching over there, 30-some people, so welcome, and we've got about that on YouTube as well, a few on Twitter, so I'm glad you guys are here, and it looks to be some chatting going on in the Rumble chat tonight, so yeah, very glad you guys are here, and welcome. So that is vaccineimpact.com, and then let's take a look at the other articles that I had uh, pulled up, not too many more tonight, probably will be a more or less abbreviated show for tonight, just because... Uh, we, well, we've covered a lot already, but um, I didn't quite have the uh, prep time that I normally do, so it's a little going to be a little bit shorter, although I do have a lot of videos tonight, so we'll see what we can get to. All right, geoengineeringwatch.org. And uh, another good friend of mine, Dane Wigington, and also a longtime client. Yeah, so this is um, yesterday's Global Alert, New Global Alert News broadcast number 435. So it says the U.S. Navy War College is promoting a seminar titled Geoengineering the Earth's Climate, yet official sources and matrix media both try to marginalize any public discussion of this most dire issue. The ongoing COP28 Global Climate Conference is being seen as the smoke and mirrors facade that it is. So, you know, that, that line right there is kind of why I've had people ask me about COP28 and do I think it's re real important? Remember we talked about Craig Bong and um, Janie Duvall's video that they put out last, um, I don't know, a week or 10 days ago or something on Janie's channel. And um, it was being billed as the be-all, end-all, this is going to change everything, December 12th, everything's going to be changed. To a certain degree, from a globalism standpoint, that might be true. From a world government standpoint, maybe. But will it change anything else? Doubtful. And Dane sort of sums it up here. The ongoing COP28 Global Climate Conference is being seen as the smoke and mirrors facade that it is. A recent geoengineering patent promotes the spraying of highly toxic dimethyl 
dimethylamine, dimethylamine into our skies to enhance cloud formation. At ground level, thousands of tons of dead fish wash ashore in Japan shortly after the mass release of Fukushima wastewater. Toxic skies, toxic seas, toxic everything. How much longer can we survive on a dying planet? Is there still time to turn the tide? So, again, geoengineeringwatch.org is where that is. That is the December 9th edition of Global Alert News. And I helped Dane put that, uh, put that podcast and show together this particular week. Um, the show on YouTube is the exact same show that you'll find on Rumble and BitChute. Sometimes they're different, uh, depending on what he wants to talk about. He likes to leave certain things out on the YouTube version in order to prevent him from getting a strike or being censored on YouTube. So, But this week, it was all the same across the different platforms. So, yeah, that was uh, geoengineeringwatch.org, and... This is the Royal Channel for folks watching, like I am, watching the uh, um, king, quote-unquote, the king, who thinks he's going to be king of the world, I think, uh, Charles. And um, this is kind of a play-by-play of uh, the entire British family, unfortunately, but um, there is some interesting stuff on here uh, about Charles. So... Feel free to look at that if you want to. We'll link to the Royal Channel in the uh, post that we do on Substack tomorrow. And I want to bring your attention to this. This is kind of a big deal, maybe. At least for me it is. Um, loyalty, my good friend. Well, we finally settled on setting up <clears throat> a broadcast. So that is coming soon. It's coming very soon. It's coming this week. So be there if you want. Be there if you want. This broadcast will be the first one that we do together. We have uh, we met and talked about it yesterday. And... Um, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to talk about some uh, some some biblical related end times events and things like that. So you guys who are interested in that sort of conversation, that's pretty much what it's going to be. It's called Exponential Expectations 2024, and he's got a uh, upcoming video on here already, upcoming uh, thumbnail. So if you click through and go to Loyalty in the Last Days on YouTube, you can click this icon. And that will be the actual page where the broadcast is that we do in two days. So that is going to happen on Wednesday this week. That's the plan. It says, it says two days here, waiting December 13th is the scheduled date. So yeah, the 13th is Wednesday. And I'm not exactly sure what time it'll be. We were talking about doing, um, kind of sticking with the whole 11 idea. It's possible that it will be at 11 Central Time. 11 Central Time on Wednesday. That's 11 in the morning, not 11 p.m. 11 in the morning on Wednesday. That's the plan. Um, if it's not that, I will let you guys know. But if you're on my Substack, if you're on my Substack, you will get uh, the link, but also the um, decided upon time whenever it's going to happen. I'm pretty sure it's going to be around 11 a.m. Central Time, which would be noon Eastern um, on Wednesday coming up on the 13th this week. So that will be pretty interesting. We're going to talk about some interesting things, including uh, King Charles. And uh, we've got some info about him. We're going to bring up and um, talk about will he be the Antichrist. And um, uh, Loyalty's found some really interesting information, some of which he's posted in band. So if you guys are in band, you may have already seen some of the different imagery and things that he's posted directly from King Charles. Um, from his from his different groups. I think it was the Astra Carta and, and some of the other info that he put on there. So, yeah, look for that broadcast on Wednesday this week, and we'll see how it goes. That'll be our first broadcast together. So, uh, But we'll link to it and definitely send it out in the Substack and everything. So if you guys want more info, want more uh, uh, Doug and loyalty information, then that will be happening on Wednesday, and I certainly appreciate it if you guys want to tune in and or share it. It'll be a, a very interesting situation, I think. So yeah, it's going to be on Loyalty's channel, maybe on both of his channels, I don't really know, and I think we're planning to also live stream it to my Rumble channel. We'll see how it goes. We have a few little technical things to work out, but that's the plan. It's probably going to be on Loyalty's two YouTube channels, and then also on my Rumble channel. That's that's the plan. So for you guys on Rumble, um, you can tune in live on my channel, so Diamond Disc on Rumble, 
Wednesday, probably at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central Time. And that's the plan at the moment. Again, be on the Substack list if you guys want to find out for sure. So yeah, loyalty in the last days. Now, this is a video. I wanted to show you this clip. Um, I mentioned, I forgot her name, unfortunately, last week, but I mentioned her. And um, there was some discussion about, just friendly discussion, friendly bantering about, um, I mentioned with Kissinger last week dying. I said, well, maybe he's got a meat hook. Maybe he's on a meat hook like Hitler is in hell. And um, I got some feedback on that. People saying, well, that can't possibly be true. And nobody can go, nobody can go to hell and come back. And nobody can, nobody's even in hell. You got people who say that. Nobody's even in heaven now. Nobody's in hell now. And uh, I like these people who know exclusively and know exactly um, all these different things. And they think they're, they're basing it on scripture, I guess. I don't know. But they can say definitively that no one's in heaven right now. No one's in hell and all these other things. Well, I'm not going to go quite that far. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that I tend to believe people who have had the experience of, of what, they go, what they perceive as going to heaven and sort of give them the benefit of the doubt. And like I try and do on my YouTube channel, take it to the Lord in prayer. So um, what was discussed last week was, okay, if Kissinger died, maybe he's got his own special treatment happening in hell right now. And um, so that's where some of this, this commentary came up. And I wanted to play for you guys the clip that I found about, um, about that particular event and Kat, in her own words, explaining, um, if you don't know who she is, she's a very interesting person. She's going to explain what she witnessed. And you can believe it or not believe it. I tend to believe her because I've heard her talk many, many, many hours at this point. So this is just a, um, a clip of Kat Kerr talking about famous people that she's seen in heaven and hell. So here it is. And when you're abused, usually as a child, that shows up later because it goes in your soul. And that's what you, we, everybody knows. What you put in there is what you will become. And many people, even though it's not an excuse, that's probably why they were like that. But if they receive Christ, they're going to have sins forgiven like they never did it. So Each you. one of us. You know, he doesn't have to do that. But because of his love for us and his son sacrificed for us, that is the way it works in heaven. And there'll be people there you never expected to be there. I've also been to hell. I've seen people who went to hell. Someone who totally, absolutely despised and hated God would never come back to him. I did see Hitler, and I tell people all the time, I saw Hitler the first time I was taken there, and he was hanging on a meat hook in hell. And I want to say this. You can be as wicked and evil as you want to, thinking Satan will reward you. He rewards no one. He hates everyone, and those who serve Satan the most will be the most tortured in hell when they get there. That's There's true. no reward in hell. It's so worth it to give yourself to Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay, yeah, so that was, the, that was the clip, or at least one of them. I've heard her say it in other interviews, um, and more than once, that that was uh, what she witnessed. So you can take it or leave it. That's totally up to you, and that was where that whole comment came from, from my perspective, about, okay, maybe... Um, Maybe Kissinger has his own private meat hook, too. He's given the favors as well, you see. So, we'll see. But, um, I sh actually, I hope I never see that. But um, Kat says that that's where, that's where Hitler is, so who knows? You can either believe it or not. But I do find her very credible. I've, I've listened to her many, many times on Elijah Streams, which I think is the channel she was, at least for a long time. I don't know if she still is on there or not. I haven't seen her in a while, but um, very good info. Very good info, and um, I tend to believe her. I think that um, she really has been to heaven thousands of times and, and trans transferred back to her body. And that if we are in the end times, this is sort of what I've come to uh, as far as my understanding, if we are truly in the end times, maybe her mission is to explain heaven and explain it in such a way that people who are not really drawn to scripture or religion or whatever might be more accepting hearing what it's like from someone like her. And she has some amazing stories that she tells. So again, you know, use your own judgment and take it to the Lord in prayer. So yeah, let's uh, let's move on though. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, this is my good friend, Julie. And I've mentioned her music before. And I often tweet out her videos on my Twitter account because I create these videos. Um, so the newest ones that we um, posted this week are Healing Presence. But if you guys want some uh, very spiritual healing type music, I think her, her music is, 
extraordinary. It's really good. I mean, she essentially has come up with her own genre of Christian music. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's nothing but positive feedback from what I can tell. But all these videos here are ones that I've produced for her, and it goes back a little ways at this point. Um, Stepping Out was the first one that we did three months ago. So I'm putting out about three new videos for her every week on her channel. And I try and remember it when I can and uh, tweet tweet them out as well so that people on Twitter will see them. So, yeah, I know um, Emily and some other folks are big fans of hers as far as her music. It's very, very comforting type of music. So if you're looking for that type of thing, or maybe um, maybe you need it to calm down your crazy pets. Uh, I know people that use it for that. Or maybe you need it for um, elderly, like, hospice care type situations, convalescent type stuff. Um, it's it's often used for that kind of thing. So I'm not getting anything for promoting her music other than um, the satisfaction of knowing I'm promoting something that's really good and very godly. So... Um, Something to take a look at if you uh, are interested in really great music. So yeah, Julie True is where she's at. Julie True Soaking Music on YouTube. So you can find it on there. And yeah, so we're, we're putting out new videos every single week. Now I often have this website pulled up just to see uh, what's there. And um, in my prep time, I didn't really have too much time to go through this. So... I wanted to see what all they've got on Israel 365 News, which of course is super pro-Israel and super anti-Palestine you know, and everything else, which I'm not on either side. I'm on God's side. But it is interesting to see some of the things that they put out there, like Christmas ornaments raise awareness of Israeli hostages. And um, let's see what else we have here. In Minnesota, 25 Jewish schools receive bomb threats, of course. Um... So yeah, there's quite a few articles on here, so I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to investigate that further. Nothing's really jumping out at me, though. Which takes us to our final slide here, I guess. It's the uh, Substack post. Uh, this is where you find the ability to subscribe to my Substack, and thank you guys for, for um, jumping on that list. That's very helpful to me for you guys to be on the list because... That saves me trying to post all these links to somewhere like Facebook or whatever and then getting censored big time because that always happens. So, yeah, definitely, um, you know, if you're interested in the links, feel free to jump on that list. Just, just drop your email in there and hit subscribe. There is a mechanism there to support what I'm doing if, it, if you're so inclined. And if so, thank you very much. You certainly um, are not um, pressured to do so. However, note there were no commercials in this broadcast tonight. And nothing I do is monetized on any of the platforms. So, um, you know, the only way I can get compensated here for what I'm doing at all, which is not really about that for me, but it does. it is nice. It's a nice thing to be compensated for your work. And I certainly appreciate that. And Substack is one of those mechanisms. And then, of course, so is the store, which we've talked about before. And we've got some new products coming on here as well. So look for that in the coming days. Got several things in mind that we're going to be adding to the store, and I'll try and send out a Substack post about that, and hopefully some pictures as well. So we'll see how it goes this week. It's been a little crazy around here lately. And this is my uh, Twitter profile. You can see the top two tweets there is is uh, actually Miss True here. So yeah, the uh, Diamond Report on Twitter is certainly available, so if you guys are on Twitter, feel free to follow me there. And this is Take It to the Lord in Prayer End Times Dates on YouTube as well. So, again, how do these videos end up staying on YouTube? Well, they don't. I end up uploading a uh, censored version, a cut-down version, uh, later on in the week. This, you know, the last week or two, it's taken me a few extra days to even get to it. Um, so, don't look for it tomorrow. It'll probably be two or three days uh, beyond today, the broadcast day. So for you guys who are here for the broadcast, you're getting the information first and exclusive, I guess, because it's taking me longer and longer to get to the um, archive versions and get them uploaded and, and, and things edited and rendered and, and multiple clips made and all this different stuff. There's a lot to it. So thank you guys in advance for um, jumping on the, uh, the Substack list. That's the link for the Doug and Loyalty video. <clears throat> Thanks, Emily, for posting that. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting broadcast, and um, we'll, we'll know more to, 
to report next week as far as what's actually discussed. We uh, we talked about it and we know kind of where we're going with it, but we, we like the idea of it sort of being a little bit, um, you know, fly by the seat of the pants sort of thing. We, he's got some things he wants to talk about and I think that um, that I will definitely talk about Charles because he's got those images that I mentioned that are posted in band. Um, talking about the Astra Carta and some of these other things that Charles is involved with, as in King Charles is involved with. Um, pretty interesting, I think. So we'll we'll be discussing at least some of that on the broadcast on Wednesday. And if you guys missed it, um, loyalty in the last days, let me go back to that uh, page here. Loyalty in the last days. Loyalty is a friend of mine. He is a Brit and um, we're going to do a broadcast this coming Wednesday. I'm thinking probably at 11 o'clock Central Time, U.S., uh, and that will be live on Loyalty's channel, so go there and subscribe, Loyalty in the Last Days on YouTube. He's got two channels. It'll probably be on both channels, I think, and it will probably be on my Rumble channel as well, on my Rumble channel. So his two channels and my one channel, I think. That's the plan. We're using a, a platform that only lets us simultaneously live stream to three places, so that's the three, I think, at the moment. So, yeah, it's uh, it's called... Exponential Expectations 2024, and that is the um, the basic uh, title at the moment, and I will be his first guest on the first live stream, so I'm very honored to have that privilege, and uh, we'll, we'll get loyalty involved and in, in do another broadcast on one of my channels as well, or maybe several channels. Um, we are live streaming to four channels here on my, my platform. I've got my two Facebook pages and my YouTube channel and Rumble, so that's where we're going to. On these live streams, we do that every week. Every week, Sunday night, 10 p.m. Central. That's where we are. So, so far, so good on all that. If you guys want to know how to find me, I mentioned Twitter already. The Diamond Report on Twitter, Twitter X, and then Take It to the Lord in Prayer on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> Take It to the Lord in Prayer, End Times Dates, and then the rest of the channels, the, the other platforms, it's pretty much Diamond Disc everywhere. D-I-A-M-O-N-D-I-S-E. Right there it is. It's my company name, and Diamond Disc Audio is my company, so that's I'm just using that as my short, abbreviated word. I couldn't just use the word diamond because everybody, you know, that was probably taken ages ago on Rumble and all these other platforms. So I'm using Diamond Disc, which is um, something that means something to me. So that's how you can find me on most platforms. I'm even Diamond Disc on Twitter, actually, not my Diamond Report channel, um, but my music business stuff is Diamond Disc on um, Twitter. So if you guys are in, involved in music, you can find me on there, although I don't tweet very much uh, as far as music business stuff goes. But you can find me on Rumble, and you can also find me on BitChute, Diamond Disc on there, and then same thing on Brideon, which is a good platform, I think, Mike Adams platform. And then ClickView as well, which is another one that um, doesn't censor. You can upload stuff, and uh, they don't, you know, they don't support live streaming or anything like that, but you can upload Upload video content. Highly recommended. It's a good system. Seems to be really um, uh, really solid as far as I can tell. And then Diamond Disc on TikTok as well. That's pretty new. Got a few new followers, so that's pretty cool. Um, still crazy things going on with my uploads, but I've sort of determined that that seems to be the way their algorithm works with the stuff that I post, which I guess that's fine. So I'll get a few hundred or like a couple hundred views on the first several videos I put up, and then the rest of them drop to zero after that. Don't know why. Um, so I don't know if it's being flagged and then, uh, you know, throttled or, or what exactly, but I did find um, that I've had two videos removed from TikTok because they were too dangerous for their community standards. So they've removed two of my videos. One of them was a clip from um, a, sh a couple shows ago where I was talking about Dutch scents and earthquakes, and um, we were talking about pole shifts. You guys might remember that from a couple weeks ago. And um, it, it, it did. In the same clip, it also mentioned January 6th. So I think that's probably why they took the video down, was not based on earthquakes in pole shifts, but probably um, it's far too dangerous to talk about January 6th. And um, all it was was just telling about the videos that um, the speaker had released and um, Speaker of the House and... Um, you know, some of the ramifications of what was happening with the videos that were being released. And that apparently is too dangerous for TikTok. So figure that one out. So they took that video down. But I guess it's it doesn't work quite the same as YouTube. They didn't punish me in any way. I mean, I still upload there and, and 
nothing really changed. It, they just sent me a warning saying to stop violating their community guidelines and such. So I, I am not, I'm not trying to violate their community guidelines, but I'm guessing it probably will keep happening because I'm just uploading the um, video clips as I see fit. So whatever. Anyway, again, it's the Chicom. So what do you do? So here's the band group that we've mentioned so much tonight, but it's uh, the Diamond Report on band. So band.us slash at the Diamond Report. That's where it is. So feel free to um, join that if you so choose. And then this is my uh, music business that I mentioned before, um, diamonddiscaudio.com. And that's where it is. Or you can just go to dougdiamond.com. And this has all kinds of info here if you're interested in... Um, Music business related stuff. Plus, I also do, you know, diamond. The diamond digital media aspect of what I do is um, building websites and doing graphic design and um, things like that. So, um, if you're interested in that or have a need for it, you can uh, send me an email and and contact me through the website if you want. And and I would love to work with you. So feel free to uh, reach out that way if you're interested. And uh, man, I'm staying really busy. So hope you guys are uh, doing well and had a really good weekend and. And we are in the in the throes of yet another holiday season, it seems. So I hope you guys have a really good rest of your week. I guess we can wrap it up. We've got, I don't know, I guess several several more videos here. I'm thinking about playing one or two more tonight yet. But um, I think that's all I had for you guys tonight. So again, I hope you guys have a blessed week. And um, feel free to reach out if you have any comments or questions. You can leave comments on the videos. You can... Um, Send me an email through Substack if you want, if that's easier, or um, you can, what else? You can post things in band. You can make comments or ask questions in band if you want to. And it's a community of, it's a very small community, but it's a it's a good group of, of like-minded people in there. And, um, you know, if you're looking for people to talk to who, you know, maybe unlike your family or friends or whatever, really kind of understand what's going on, uh, I think we're more or less all in that same boat. Uh, we have... A community of people that is growing and um, I think is uh, very unique from that standpoint so you know people like to get in there and share different things and different things that they're researching and I find that really interesting because that kind of sends me off in different um, you know different avenues as well as far as what I'm looking at so yeah okay well let's take a look at two more videos here and I've got, I've got a couple short ones so one of them is a your favorite in mind, Yuval Homo Harari, and it's called The Rights Guaranteed in the Constitution Are Not Based on Divine Commandment, So Says the False Prophet here, Yuval Noah Homo Harari. So we're going to watch that. It's a short one. And then after that, we've got a um, short David Icke video about Israel and the Rothschilds. I think that's interesting as well. So... And then I've been known to um, take other videos and plug them in in post-production of this show. So don't be surprised if there's more than two videos. If you watch this, uh, this video later on on my other platforms like Rumble and BitChute and stuff. Uh, because there's a good chance I may put other videos in, not to lengthen the show, but just to get more really good content in there. Because I'm finding tons of really good videos that other people have made and it's easy to insert those in there and... Uh, of course, I'm not claiming credit for them. I'm just I'm trying to get the word out for whatever they're sharing as well. All right, you guys. Hope you guys have a blessed week, and we'll talk again very soon. Mm -hmm.